homicide investigators faced a difficult question. Was the death of a young woman in a deserted park suicide or was it murder? An alert homicide detective found a tiny clue in a suspect's trash can. And it was a discarded bandage, a dental expert, and a colossal blunder that revealed a love quadrangle with enough intrigue to go around. Nineteen-year-old Devon Guzman left her apartment one night and never returned home. The next morning, her roommate, Carrie Renner, and a friend drove all around Easton, Pennsylvania, looking for her. Eventually, the girls found Devon's brand new car in a deserted lot. When I saw her, Devin's, you know, lips and eyebrows were purple, and I don't know why I didn't think she was not dead, probably because, you know, nobody really expects that. Devin, and I shook her, and she didn't answer. So I was screaming. I was hysterical. Devin Guzman was pronounced dead at the scene. She had sustained a severe laceration in the throat area. An empty syringe was found in Devin's waistband although toxicology tests showed no drugs in Devon's system. And in Devon's hand was a knife. There was no blood on it, and experts concluded from its size that it was not the murder weapon. It was an unsophisticated attempt to lead police in the wrong direction or to perhaps somehow we would, we would conclude that uh, it wasn't a murder. The lack of blood at the scene along with grass and dirt stains on the victim's pants, confirmed what police already knew. It's a secondary crime scene for sure. What was apparent to us was, one, she didn't die there, two, she didn't get into the vehicle under her own power. Devon's body had been covered with her own jacket, which investigators found revealing. That's kind of a symbol to us that it was somebody who cared about her. We usually start with the people closest to the victim, and then we work outwards. Devon's roommate, Kerry Renner, was immediately considered a suspect. The two had been lovers. Devon meant the world to me. And I loved her for who she was, and we were in love because it was real. Police discovered that Kerry and Devon Guzman had been in a fight the night before the murder. It was so loud that patrons in the bar underneath their apartment heard everything. So they hear banging around, yelling, and somebody from the bar goes upstairs to investigate, and they come down, and they say, well, it's the girls upstairs. When questioned by police, Carrie didn't deny it. Our fights were more out of the normal. Like, you know, like, we would hit each other or, you know, stuff like that. She would pull my hair, you know, the vodka bottle, throwing it at me, pouring it on her. Um, that's just how we were. Kerry said Devon left the apartment after the fight, and she denied having anything to do with Devon's murder. Investigators decided to take a much closer forensic look inside the apartment. Everybody in Devon's family already think that I did it. I thought it was her, got to be honest with you, because um, she was the rough one. She was abusive towards Devon. And so that was my immediate uh, thought that this woman or uh, would do that. Carrie Renner admitted that she fought with her roommate, Devin Guzman, the night before Devin's murder, but Carrie denied killing her. In their apartment, in the shower stall, investigators found Devin's car mat. It appeared to have been recently washed. Investigators sprayed luminol in the shower stall underneath the mat, and it glowed. It was a positive, presumptive test for the presence of blood. 
DNA test confirmed the blood in the shower stall was that of the victim, Devin Guzman. So our thinking is, well, could the murder have happened in the shower? And could it have started, you know, in the car where there could have been blood or she had bled on that when she was transported into the vehicle. Carrie was immediately brought to police headquarters and given a lie detector test. It was terrifying, it was scary, but I mean, I really, I had nobody there that I knew. There was nothing I could do and I didn't want to give in and say, okay, you're right, because I know I didn't do it. The results of the polygraph were inconclusive. Carrie is a viable suspect. We can't rule her out at this time. We have signs of a struggle at her house. We have traces of blood and we just can't rule her out. But investigators found something else in Devon's background. Devon had another lover, a married woman, Michelle Hetzel. In fact, Devon and Michelle had recently returned from a vacation together in the Virgin Islands. While there, the two made a commitment to one another. She told me that they got married and they, they go through these things, you know. I gave my advice the best I could with what I saw. Um, but, you know, being 19, you can only do so much. You can't chain them to the porch. Police learned that Carrie Renner wasn't the only one upset by this affair. Michelle's husband, Brandon Bloss, wasn't thrilled either. It really creates ego problems. It's one thing if your wife starts having an affair with another male. I think if your wife's having an affair with a female, it even creates more problems. And I think that since that was occurring in this relationship, it, it caused quite a bit of anger uh, between Brandon and Devin. Friends told police that Devin, Carrie, Michelle, and even Michelle's husband, Brandon, were often at odds. Of course, anytime you interject a, a third person without the consent of both parties, uh, there's going to be a problem there. It's four people, not just Michelle and her husband. And um, Devin it was also, Carrie was involved. And that Carrie was the spark plug, if you will. In tracing Devin Guzman's last known movements, a witness told police he saw Devin Guzman at Michelle and Brandon's home on the night of her murder. I woke up because there was some noise outside that I realized was an argument. The woman that I now know to be Devin was standing on the doorstep of the house in back of me with two people inside the house, the three of them arguing. I looked at the clock, it was 12.35. Detectives sprayed the inside of the couple's home with fluorescein, which is like luminol in that it glows when it comes into contact with red blood cells. They found nothing. We should be able to detect blood all over the place if, if this is where her throat was cut. And we go into the house and we're all over the place and we're not coming up with anything. Since dirt and grass stains were found on Devin's pants, Investigators decided to spray items in the couple's backyard with fluorescein. There, on a pool cover, and on the nozzle of a water hose, were tiny traces of blood. But the blood couldn't be tested for DNA. It's been too heavily washed off. There's just not enough uh, genetic material there. And when you go to do DNA from blood, there's no DNA in red blood cells. You have to get it from uh, a nucleated cell, like a white blood cell. And there's just not enough there for testing. Police found another suspicious piece of evidence in the couple's washing machine. Well, there was a pair of jeans belonging to Michelle Hetzel, and there was some water uh, in that. Police took the jeans and water, and it tested positively <clears throat> presumptive for presence of blood. The blood was so diluted, it was impossible to get a DNA profile. But in a pocket of Michelle's jeans, police found the plastic cap of a drug syringe, the same type of syringe which was in Devon's waistband. Michelle Hetzel had worked for a physician in a physician's office where she may have had access to those types of syringes. Police now had three suspects in the murder of Devon Guzman, and all of them had the motive and opportunity to commit the crime.
On the night of her murder, Devin Guzman got into a fight with her roommate, Carrie Renner. She then drove to the home of her other lover, Michelle Hetzel. I really didn't like Carrie. I thought Michelle was the sweet one. Carrie was the, the bad one. Carrie Renner, Michelle Hetzel, and her husband, Brandon, all denied any involvement in the murder. Michelle and Brandon admitted that Devon paid them a visit around midnight, but said she left about an hour later. But based on the forensic evidence, police didn't believe Devon ever left the couple's home alive. First of all, no one saw her anywhere other than there. That was the last time she was seen, was at that location. Detective Barry Golazeski decided to put Brandon and Michelle's home under 24-hour surveillance. He saw Brandon take the garbage out to the sidewalk and on a hunch, confiscated it, since trash is considered public property once it's put out for collection. In the trash bag, Golazeski discovered something suspicious a used Telfa pad, commonly used to cover open wounds. And it, it has a unique uh, wound outline on it. You're able to see the entire outline, and it, it sort of looked like a mouth. According to Galazeski, they look like, like bite marks, you know, that's imprinted on these bandages. Scientists examined the Telfa pad with alternate light sources, which can provide much more information than an examination with normal white light. If you look at the gauze pad under white light and you see absolutely nothing, you may go to an alternate light source and find a material which has oozed from the bite mark that does react to the alternate light source. Under the alternate light source, an image appeared on the bandage. The shape of the image on the bandages was elliptical. It had the same type of measurement you would look at when you, when you see a bite mark. And I told him it was very possible that this, this actually was a bite mark. Investigators now had legal authority to inspect Brandon Bloss's body. On his left forearm was the clear impression of a fresh bite wound. But whose was it? The medical examiner ordered Devon's body to be exhumed for a sample of her bite impressions. Well, this is the first time that I've ever been asked to uh, secure dental impressions of a deceased victim, especially one who has been exhumed. Um, I've never done it before, and I'm not quite certain if I know of anybody else in my field that has done it before. Dr. Scanlon took a cast of Devon's teeth, like an orthodontist does when making braces, then scanned the casts into a computer. Using a process called hollow volume overlay, Dr. Scanlon superimposed computer-generated hollow outlines of Devon's teeth over a scale photograph of the bite mark on Brandon's arm. The outer rim of the bite cast and the outer rim of the bite mark were consistent. Police were convinced that the bite wound on Brandon's arm was from Devon Guzman. But this was proof that Brandon and Devon fought. It was not proof of murder. I don't think that science in any way inculpates Brandon toward a murder at all. What it proves is Devon Guzman bit Brandon Blos, period. Then police realized something. They had Michelle's car in their possession. Why? Michelle was driving when she and Carrie found Devon's body. And Michelle inadvertently pulled up too close to Devon's car, so close that her car was impounded as part of the crime scene. I don't think Michelle has ever dreamed that her car was going to be impounded as part of that search. In Michelle's trunk, police found Brandon's clothing and some rubber gloves. We find clothing, sweatshirt, jeans socks, shoes, and underwear, and they're all consistent with the male of Brandon's build, and there's blood that's evident on these clothes. DNA testing of the blood on Brandon's clothes revealed it was Devin Guzman's. It is direct evidence that shows that the husband, Brandon Bloss, 
uh, had contact with this victim and uh, when she was bleeding. You know, it's, it's tough to explain that one. Brandon Bloss and Michelle Hetzel were arrested and charged with first degree murder. Prosecutors do not believe Carrie Renner had anything to do with her roommate Devin Guzman's murder. The small traces of Devin's blood in the apartment shower could easily have been menstrual. And forensic testing of Devin's car mat in the apartment revealed the stains were from food, not blood. Prosecutors believe Michelle and Brandon killed Devin Guzman because of jealousy. Michelle is married to Brandon, and he's living with her, but yet Devin and Michelle are still having a relationship going on. So obviously there's jealousy from multiple uh, people involved. Prosecutors say Michelle Hetzel was jealous of Devin's continuing relationship with Kerry Renner. There was no question that there was this relationship and uh, there was some jealousies between the girls. They both had a reason to get rid of her. And there may have been a financial motive as well. When Devin and Michelle went to the Virgin Islands together, Michelle charged the entire vacation on her husband's credit card, including their so-called wedding rings. $7,000. Well, guess who earned that money? Brandon. Michelle couldn't, couldn't keep a job, didn't have a job at the time. She was cheating on her spouse, not with another man, but with another woman. Prosecutors were convinced the murder was premeditated. Phone records showed that Michelle or Brandon called Devin on the night of the murder. A neighbor confirmed seeing Devin arrive around 12.30. That's good, thing. Cool. At some point, the couple lured Devin out to their backyard and attacked her. The evidence suggests Devin fought back aggressively, biting Brandon's arm in the process. But she was no match for the knife. No one knows who actually wielded the knife. The forensic evidence suggests the couple dragged Devon's body to the car, leaving grass and dirt stains on her pants. Michelle and Brandon then drove Devon's body and her car to the deserted park just two miles from their home, where they staged the scene to make Devon's death appear to be a suicide. But they made several mistakes. When Michelle planted the syringe, she left the cap in her jeans, where it was later found by police. The evidence suggests Brandon removed his bloody clothes at the park and put them in the trunk of Michelle's car. I think he actually comes home naked, jumps in the car, which his wife had to drive. Otherwise, we wouldn't find the, the, the clothing in, in her car. Later. The couple tried to remove the blood evidence from their backyard with the garden hose, but it was discovered with fluorescein. The next day, when Michelle and Carrie Renner went searching for Devon, Michelle pulled her car so close to Devon's car that police considered it part of the crime scene. This meant that the police didn't need a search warrant to look inside Michelle's trunk. Michelle and Brandon eventually turned on one another. Brandon said Michelle was the one who killed Devin, and Michelle said it was Brandon. She's a compulsive liar. I mean, she lies so much that she has to make up lies to cover her other lies, and she's probably exhausted. There was a witness that we called the trial that said about a 30 or 40 days prior to this, he uh, had been solicited by Michelle that she would give him sex or money or both uh, if he would take out and kill Devin, that she wanted to get rid of her. In the end, Brandon Bloss and Michelle Hetzel were both convicted of Devin Guzman's murder. They were both sentenced to life in prison. Had it not been for the forensic evidence, an innocent person 
might have been punished. Once they thought that I was the one that did it. I mean, so we really actually needed the, you know, forensics to actually put them away. And the guilty may have gone unidentified. But for the science, we would not have made an arrest in this case, and we certainly could not have gotten a conviction. It was uh, really quite amazing, and and uh, as time goes on, I find that uh, you know it, it's more becomes more amazing what they do. I find myself watching these kind of shows myself because, well, because. Well, I think that this was excellent uh, investigation work by Detective Galazeski, who really, as I said, cracked this case and, and deserves a lot of the credit for the successful prosecution of it. It was kind of the first time I've ever had a homicide case where the victims actually had evidence that came from, from her own mouth uh, in order to convict, you know, her killer.